So last time you saw us, we were in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. We have just driven two hours east and we are in Asheville, North Carolina. And today we are visiting the biggest house in the United States. We are at Biltmore Estate. But our slot time to actually see the house isn't until 3 p.m. So we are here at the Antler Hill Village. And this is where, back when the estate was first built, the people, the families that lived and worked the estate, this was their social center. Now it's restaurants and there's a creamery and there's a winery and there's hotels. So we're gonna explore this area before we head to the main house. More barbecue. We decided to eat here because when you're in Carolina, you gotta eat the barbecue. I am going with the Eastern North Carolina vinegar sauce, or you can get the South Carolina mustard smoky tomato barbecue sauce. I'm going with the uh, Eastern North Carolina vinegar sauce. Barbecue delivery. Yo. Yes. That is not pulled pork, y'all. That's pulled chicken. Yummy. Well, you can really taste the smoke on it. Mmm. And the brisket. Cooked tender. Looks right. Got a little bit of that vinegar-based barbecue sauce. We're gonna dip that in. Oh, I love that. It's it's so thin, like it's like water. Nice and tender, gets the job done. A lot of flavor, good fatty piece right there. That's pretty good barbecue right there. I really love the sauce. I got some mac and cheese and some slaw. I like to eat it all together. <laughs> and we got some hush puppies. Mmm. That's like a delicious, crispy fried dessert. It's so sweet. Real sweet hush puppies. I love hush puppies. Those are good. So I got the pulled pork sandwich because I just love pulled pork sandwiches. Came with one side. I got the coleslaw, but you don't eat coleslaw on the side. Put it on the sandwich. Okay, so let's give this a try. It's gonna be a nice, messy. Oh, and I can tell it's one of those really soft buns, real nice and buttery. So that's a different kind of barbecue sauce. I didn't get the Carolina like he did, and I didn't get the South Carolina either. I got their tomato robust sauce. It's good, it's got a little bit of spice to it, but not too much. But that is very good pulled pork and the bread, just the whole combination makes a really good sandwich. So we ate barbecue because we're on a barbecue kick, because when in North Carolina, you must eat barbecue, right? We so that's- some, We ate some barbecue yesterday, but we didn't vlog. We did, we had some really good barbecue I'll yesterday. Tell you about that later. So we wanted to eat at the Smokehouse, which is the food truck, but there's lots of food options here in the creamery. You can get sandwiches. Cedric's Tavern is a full restaurant. And then when you go up near the winery, there's a bistro and another restaurant there. So there's a lot of food options. We were just in the mood for barbecue and that did the job for us. State has their own vineyards here on the grounds and of course if they have vineyards you have your own winery and I've been told it's very good wine here and they do a free sample so we're gonna pop in and give it a little taste so this is a nice cool tunnel as you walk through it's completely like surrounded in stone underground and that is the neatest wine cellar that I think I've ever seen I haven't seen a lot but that's pretty cool um, the wine library of Biltmore so that's all the wines that have been made here since the 1970s and you can see that those wines are not touched they're covered in dust so we are about to do the complimentary wine tasting here at the we're in queue, we're in queue for the wine tasting so our tasting includes five wines of our choice. We can pick any ones we want in any particular order. These are the wines that we can choose from off the tasting menu. So my first is the Orange Muscat, which is a semi-sweet, fruit-flavored wine. White, obviously. Oh, that's good. That's very, semi-sweet, mm -mm, that's very sweet. And you can definitely taste the fruit, that's good. So my first one, I decided to go with the red, more of a dry. This one here is the limited release Sangiovese. Did I say that right? I think so. Sangiovese. This one is a medium full body with aromas of raspberry and violet with taste of dark berries and pomegranate. Get the aromas out of there. You can definitely smell the pomegranate. 
Wow. Yeah. Definitely a little bit of the uh, the dark berries, the raspberries. Wow. This is you can taste that, but it's so smooth. I don't do wine much, so I'm a beer guy. Yeah. Somebody's behind us saying I don't like wine. I'm not a wine person. I'm a beer person, but hey, this is pretty good. Okay, my second one is called Chenin Blanc, and it's honeysuckle paired with ripe melon and kiwi. Obviously sweet. You gotta give it the twirl. Give it the twirl. Don't spill it. It's really good. I love, I'm a sweet wine girl, and these have got a lot of flavor to them. You can taste the fruits in there. They're very smooth. Yeah, I got the Tempranillo, which has got fig flavors and very aromas. It's really smooth. I can't get over how smooth that is. And it's got lingering tannins also. I got the one rosé that's on the menu. So rosé is obviously a little bit in between a white and a red. It's an off-dry, not semi-sweet. So I'm not a big fan of dry, but let's give this one a try. Yep, that's dry. So I got the Biltmore Estates Albarino, which has fruit notes and has a hint of honeysuckle. And who doesn't like honeysuckle? I love honeysuckle. I used to pick it around my grandparents' house when I was younger. Wow, so different than the, the red. Oh, but very refreshing. Definitely can taste those fruit notes. And I'm, I'm picking up that honeysuckle. That's a familiar, wow, it's been a long time since I tasted that flavor. This is the red dessert wine, and it is fortified with brandy. Oh, you can smell that. So this has a 19% alcohol content. She said, if you want to try it, save it for last. So that's what we've done. Wow. You can definitely, oh, it's really good. Like I was expecting it to be over alcohol tasting, but it's not. The brandy is very, very smooth and blends perfectly with that wine. I got the same one, y'all. And uh, I, I think I heard 19% somewhere. In there. <laughs> you know what, they, it's, they should put the restaurants after this one and make for a much more interesting tour, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's delicious. Yeah, I can tell why this is the dessert wine, because it's definitely got that dessert, rich, fruity, sweet flavor. Very nice. And of course, there's a gift shop over here. So you can buy your wines, you can buy gifts. And this is the coolest thing ever. This is a Christmas ornament filled with wine. It doesn't spill, but look, it like, that is so neat. And they've got, of course, red and white, depending on your wine of choice. And we do collect Christmas ornaments from our travels, so I might just have to get one of these. And of course, after your tasting, you can come into the wine room and buy as many bottles of wine as you want to take home with you. So over here in Antler Hill, we've been through Village Green, we've walked through the winery, had some tastings, and now we're over at the farmyard because I hear there's some animals over here. So this barn is shaped different than I've ever seen before. There's a center barn, which is where we are now. And this is where would have been some of the stables. And then there's like a building that runs all the way on the outside. And right now it has um, like old farm equipment, things like that. But it, it's neat seeing what a turn of the century barn, working barn would have looked like. So we did find the animals. They're not in the barn. There's a farmyard outside of the barn. And there's a farmyard and a big playground and a pavilion where you can come if you packed your own lunch. There's a picnic area right there. And now it is just about time for our three o'clock house tour. So we're gonna hop in the van and go back over to the main house. Now we've made it to Biltmore House or Biltmore Estate. This is the largest house in the United States. It's one that 100 and 75,000 square feet. That's way bigger than any other house in North America. So that's pretty impressive. This was built in 1898 and the grounds are absolutely huge as well as the house. So it's our turn to go do the tour.
So the audio tour tells you a lot, and some of the rooms were unfinished during George Vanderbilt's life. This is one of them. This was the music room. So it was envisioned as a music room, and his grandson finished it years later. But during World War II, because Biltmore was so remote that the government decided to use this as a hiding place for some of the most valuable paintings within the United States. And this room right here was turned into a vault to hold those paintings during the war. So we're out on the terrace right now and this is why George Vanderbilt chose Asheville to build his house. This view is absolutely stunning. You can see the mountains off in the distance. You've got forests all around you. There's a lot of wildlife and the temperature is perfect. Like literally the temperature is part of the reason he chose to build here. It's like in the 70s right now, like 70 degrees. It feels fantastic. So we just finished some tour and just some things that I noticed or that stood out to me is there's 250 rooms in this chateau. We saw just a handful of them. What was really interesting was how George and Edith lived. They each had a separate, very grand bedroom and then a parlor in between. That was their family space because this house mansion, whatever you want to call it, was built for entertaining. So they had a wing to themselves and then they had the guest wings. And we got to see a few of the guest rooms and so each guest room has its own bathroom. That's pretty big for the time. And then later on down the tour you see the servants rooms and the servants rooms have a chamber pot in them. So they're very, very different between the guests and the servants. But overall beautiful house. Um, like I said, we just saw a, a small portion of it but what we saw is very grand and beautiful. You come out in a courtyard, so if you are hungry or thirsty from your trek through the house, you can get something to eat here. There's also no bathrooms in the house, and there's no air conditioning in this house. There's fans everywhere to keep it cool. But I just can only imagine being, you know, here in the early 1900s, having those big fancy ball gowns on and no air conditioning. This is beautiful. So we're walking out in the grounds right now and just look at these vines. This is Japanese wisteria. It's been here for a long time to get as big and thick as it is, but it's over this arbor. It's just beautiful through here. So the grounds are huge. The grounds are actually bigger, or the gardens, not the grounds, but the gardens are bigger than the house. So we've got some time to walk out here too. There is a wedding happening. So they're getting set up for a wedding. So the wedding's kind of taken over the lawn out front. So we've been walking around the grounds and the gardens are beautiful, but this conservatory is something else. It is stunning. So it's basically a very large greenhouse and every inch of the greenhouse from floor to ceiling is covered in plants except for the walkway. I mean, they've got palms in there, things that are not native to North Carolina. And that's what's neat about a greenhouse is it doesn't matter um, where the plants are from, you can grow them in a controlled environment. It's beautiful. That's a pretty cool experience. So this is something you definitely can spend all day here. We've been here about five hours and you really could even spend more. Like you could go back to the, the little village. There's hotels you can stay on site, but very cool experience to come here and see uh, Biltmore House. So we decided to extend our stay here one more day because 
this is such an incredible campground. Like, it's definitely in my top five campgrounds I've ever been to. And this is the Asheville East KOA campground. There's two lakes and a river that are running through this campground. And Jason's literally been fishing all day. I've just been sitting in the shade by the lake. We're about to grill. It's just the epitome of relaxation. And it's 70 degrees and we've got mountains. We're still in the Smokies. Not that, well, you can see mountains over there, but there's big mountains over here. We just are really enjoying this campground. So we're like, you know what? We're gonna stay here one more night. That's the beauty of what we're doing because we're only planning out like a few days in advance and I haven't booked the next set of campgrounds. So we have the capability of doing this, but uh, we'll have to show you around this campsite. We just really, really like this campground. Yeah. 